Hello folks, welcome to episode 8 of the Revival Initiative. I'm your host Mike Ryan. I hope everyone out there in internet land is safe and sound and enjoying their day. It's about to even get better with the special episode we're bringing to you. We have three very, very amazing guests on the show today. First up, we have Rich O'Coin. Two years ago, Rich biked across the United States on a bicycle, powered by only his own two legs. And he wrote a record while doing that. He's begun to release the songs from that. On May 22nd, he released a second single called Reset and announced the release of his album called United States, which those songs will be on. He's also starting a pre-sale for his album, so check that out online. Next up, we have Good Dear Good. They're a great young band from Halifax. They released a single called The Storm back a few months ago, which gained a lot of traction. They're an amazing band, write great songs, and we're really excited to have them on the show today. Next up we have Dave Gunning. Along with being one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, he's one of the best songwriters you'll ever hear. He's one of the most revered songwriters on the east coast of Canada, known all around the world. He's won multiple awards across the country, has a number of albums out, some great collaborations. Dave is an awesome guy, a great performer, a great storyteller. Having him on the show is truly an honor, so we're really, really fortunate to get to sit down and hear a bit of wisdom from the infamous Dave Gunning. Okay, buds, it's time. Get your pen and paper out, take some notes, get your ears warmed up. Let's do it, and let's have some fun at the same time. The Revival Initiative. We stood together at the edge of a flame With no sign of rain Walking together, stirring the dust That's been following us Count on thee, I'm counting on you To see it all through Like old friends do I trust every soul in this room As we stare at the ground Put our faith in the circle of boots The lines on our faces are starting to show Now we're taking it slow The sidewalks have cracks that go straight through Yeah, they're way worn too Count on me I'm counting on you To see it all through Like old friends do I trust every soul in this room As we stare at the ground And put our faith in the circle of boots As we stare at the ground 
and put our faith in the circle of boots.
Yeah. The song's called Celebrate the Crop, and um, my, my brother-in-law tried to convince me to, to put the song out for Legalization Day in Canada a while back, but I didn't have it ready on time. Um, it was on my last recording called Up Against the Sky, and uh, it's just kind of a celebration of harvest season, and, and uh, here we go. <laughs> So this next song is one that some of you are probably at least a little bit familiar with. Um, so this song is called The Storm. We released this one back in January, uh, January 10th, I think. And we had a release show at the Seahorse. It was a great time. Um, we've been wor we worked on the song with John Mullane. He helped us produce the song. And we're really happy with how it turned out. And um, here's a little stripped down version for you. Go. Get that burning in your ears from the folks. 
Cause they're talking like they run the show Keep your bodies in mind Keep your clothes like you're never gonna let me go Is the time is right Give a shout if the answer is a yes or no There's no clouds in the sky
The Revival Initiative. Okay, welcome to Revival Revelations, the part of the episode where we dig deep with the artists to find a little bit more about them. Revival Why is making music important to you? Um, well, it's how I make a living. Um, that makes it important. But I, I guess the reason I did it from the outset was because I love music. Um, and I can't imagine doing anything else at this point, I guess, because I've done it for so long. So it's, uh, it's my life, and yeah, I don't know. I can't imagine life without it. I think for me and for us, it's just really cool to be able to share something we've created with other people. And if people are able to connect with our art and our creative things um, in a way that's meaningful to them, then it, it's... To an, us as artists, it means a lot that we're able to connect with people on that sort of level. Um, and I mean, making music is also just super fun and super therapeutic for the soul, <laughs> I would say. Uh, why is breathing important to me? It's, it's something, I feel like that's such a big question. It's something I'm going to do until I die. I love it. I feel like very... Uh, in another world while making it. I think both the act of making it is very personal as well as sharing it is something that feels very fulfilling and um, yeah even when I'm away from my instruments there's always some sort of beat or music happening in my head. What is one thing you know now but wish you knew when you first started your career in music? I, I like being home quite a bit, and there's a lot of travel related to making a living as a touring artist. Um, obviously, right now with the COVID-19 pandemic happening, there's no traveling at all, so <laughs> perhaps I'm looking forward to going on the, out on the road again. Uh, but I, I enjoy my time at home. Um, so maybe that's something I, I didn't... It's something I didn't really consider, but uh, I don't feel sorry for myself. I'm not... I'm not. Uh, I'm. I'm so lucky to be able to do it, and I. And I. I'm not fighting in a war. So if, when I travel, I you know, don't want to go travel with my guitar and sing some songs. I think the main takeaway for me would be that the help is there. Um, there's so many people in the industry that are just incredibly helpful. That if you do have a question, there's so many people that are open to you asking them questions, open to give you giving you advice. Um, and yeah, I think I think that's something that would have been beneficial to know earlier on in, in my and our careers is just knowing that there's so many people willing to help and even if you don't know where to start like it's 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 really nice to know that you have people that you can reach out to and ask for those things because sometimes you don't even know where to start with whatever <laughs> whatever it may be so it, it's really nice to know that people have your back name a local artist who's inspired you and why i think i want to say the first aid kit um they were banned that started when I started and uh, they released a song called Rocket Summer uh, and I had gone to high school with one of them but I didn't really know the others and I reached out to them. Uh, I was like super excited about the song and was like I, I want to I wanna know how they recorded this and I want to get to know these people and and uh, they became, you know, my best friends uh, 10 years later. Somebody who's always stood up to us as a band um, in the industry that's inspired us both musically and just to get our professional game together 
um, has been Dana Beeler from Hello Delaware. So not only is she killing it as an artist, we love her music, um, but uh, just on the industry side of things, like planning, helping out Music Nova Scotia and being at events, one night she'll be on the stage, other days uh, she'll be working the, working the door. It's a really great person to um, see around and she definitely inspires us to be our best. <laughs> What ways do you think we could strengthen our local music scene in Halifax? I don't know. I mean, you can't force people to go out to hear music. I mean, that would strengthen it. More bums and seats would strengthen it. Uh, I think it all kind of starts there. Uh, people are creatures of habit, perhaps. Um, you know, ease of parking and, and, you know, Halifax in particular, maybe, I don't know, encouraging. I don't know how you could uh, offer incentives that way, but... But, uh, I don't know, I mean, obviously the music scene is really good in Halifax compared to other cities in the country, so we're really lucky. The need for more venues, which obviously is a lot easier said than done. Um, in Halifax, we definitely have a big gap when it, be when it comes to the size of venues and being able to move from one venue to the next. Um, the venues that we have are great. They're great places to play, but you might be... Your band might be able to pack the seahorse, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're ready for the marquee. Or um, there's a big there's a big gap between certain levels of stages that artists can play. Um, so that would be one big thing. Um, and then another thing I think that would benefit artists in a way would be to have earlier shows. Um, obviously, some people don't necessarily agree with that, and it depends on the scene for sure. But I think being able to Get people to come out earlier means that more people would stay for more bands. Um, sometimes there's four bill bands that don't even start until 11 and by the time that the second band's done half of the people want to go home and they don't want to stay to check out some of the other bands and it's a real shame because some of those late starters might be some of the best bands on the bills but uh, trying to get people to stay out that late can be a challenge at times. So I think earlier shows in some cases be very beneficial as well. Okay, name one local person one local menu item, and one local album you'd like to bring with you on our next quarantine, if it ever happens. Hopefully not. Okay, in lieu of picking a person, I feel like that's, that's too hard. Uh, I'm gonna pick a bunch of local records that I love. Uh, and I, I like food, but you know, I just I just have these records. It's Rose Cousin one, amazing. Speaking of cousins, this Cousins record, oh my gosh. Each other, look them up, they're a red. Halifax band one time. Also Monomyth. A lot of same members. This Dog Day record. Oh, Fade Out. Heck yeah. Adam Baldwin. Oh, great. Our own, our own Bruce. Uh, Jen Grant. This one, this one's my fave. Uh, the new uh, Aquaculture. Real, real slamming. And uh, The Stance. I love this record. This, this was, uh, this feels like Halifax. 2006. All right. Uh, thanks so much. So I think for the local person, um, obviously I would love to have my bandmates here because it would be great to live all in the same house and be able to jam again. Finally. <laughs> uh, but I think I would have to go with one person would be, um, I'd love to have our producer, John Mullane here. It would be great to work on some stuff together. Um, look into some song ideas, get some songs ready for recording at least. I'm also trying to get into getting into uh, home recording and things like that, so I could definitely use a hand. Um, so that's who I would pick. Now for a local menu item, I think I would have to go with uh, Humble Pies for a local menu item. Um, for any of you who don't know what Humble Pie is, or Humble Pies are, uh, Humble Pie is a shop here in Dartmouth where I live. I actually moved very, very close to them, so it's very convenient. Um, but Humble Pies, they're New Zealand style hand pies, really good, definitely worth a try. Um, I think they're still open as well now. So if you need some um, quarantine food, definitely hit up Humble Pie. And then as far as a album would go, local album, and I'm not trying to suck up your mic, but um, I would have to go with uh, everything we'll be fine when we get to where we think we're going uh, by the Town Heroes. Fantastic album. Um, and yeah, that would be my choices for some quarantine stuff. <laughs>
I know you're all probably wondering how I got my hands on a 1993 Mosquito Sea Nova Scotia Champion hat, and although it may be hard to believe, I actually played on the team. We defeated Reserve Mines in the finals to win the gold. A bit of history right here. I hope you all enjoyed the episode today. I had a lot of fun myself, a lot to learn, a lot to take in, a lot of great music to absorb. So, give all the artists a follow online. Everyone appreciates that. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, if people use that, I don't know. Apparently younger people do. Good Dear Good probably does. Dave doesn't really seem like a TikTok guy, but he might be on there. Give ourselves the Revival Initiative a follow on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and our own YouTube channel. We're going to have more videos coming your way very shortly. Tomorrow we have an awesome bass panel with three very prominent and active musicians in the local music scene here. You'll be able to learn a lot from that, just like you did this episode. So folks, keep your stick on the ice, your heads up, keep the dream alive, take her easy, go slow, have a good one, dream big, eat your vegetables, and live the life you want to live. Because in the end, that's all that matters. So you're out there, you're happy, and you're hearing good music. So, tune in tomorrow and tune in the next day. we got a lot more coming for you. Cheers. Revival.